It's the magic of math here, and today we're talking about tree diagrams and compound probability as we answer a standardized math test question. Here's our question today. Some students are playing a game. They roll a number cube and spin the arrow on a spinner on each turn. The number cube has sides numbered 1 through 6. The spinner has three equal size sections colored red, yellow, and blue. The tree diagram shows the sample space for the possible outcomes of rolling a number cube one time, then spinning the arrow on the spinner once. Here's our question. What is the probability that on a student's turn, the number cube will land with an even number on the top face and the arrow on the spinner will stop on the blue section? So it's your turn. I'm going to have you pause the video now, answer the question, and come back to check your work. Good luck. Welcome back. So the students that are playing this game, they're going to roll a number cube and they're going to spin an arrow on a spinner. We're told that this number cube is a standard die, has the numbers one through six on it. In our tree diagram, which is what this image is, we have the numbers one through six. So that's the first outcome is what's going to happen when we roll the number cube. And we have six possible outcomes. We call this compound probability because we're going to have a second element to our game. We're going to spin the arrow on the spinner. Our spinner has three equal size sections, meaning it's fair. The first section is red, so we have an equal chance of getting red, yellow, or blue. When we look at our red outcomes, let's look at our tree get diagram. We see that on our tree diagram, it's represented with R. So we have these six possible times we could get red after we roll the die. Now we have yellow and that's represented in our tree diagram. And we can see that we have six different opportunities given our first roll of the die. And then we have our blue sections also on the tree diagram down here with B. So now that we've color coded it, we can see that we have our compound probability. We're gonna roll our number Q and then we're gonna spin our spinner. Our question says we're gonna get an even number and blue. So we're going to start in our tree diagram with our number cube. So two is even, and there's one outcome of blue if you roll a two. We go to four in our tree diagram because it's even, the next even number after two, and four has one possible outcome spinning blue. And then our next even number is six, and there's one possible blue on the spinner when you roll a six. So we can see that from our tree diagram, there are three outcomes that could be even and blue. So three. Now we get to look at all the possible outcomes from our events. We can see that after we look at all of our branches on our tree, there are 18 different outcomes. One red, one yellow, one blue, and we could keep going with each number. So three of these 18 outcomes are even and blue. So we look at our answer choices and we see that C is three out of 18. And we know that we have a three and 18 chance of rolling an even number and spinning and landing on a blue section of the spinner. So there you have it. That is tree diagrams and compound probability.